Welcome to this week's episode of the Etsy Conversations podcast. I'm your host, Ijama. And before we start our conversation, if you would like to support the podcast, please go to convome.com slash support and you can buy me a coffee there. All funds go towards producing this podcast. And now on to the episode. My guest this week is Michelle, and she runs the Etsy shop, The Better Grind. She also has a website by the same name, thebettergrind.com. Michelle is joining me from way, way across the ponds, many ponds, from Sydney, Australia. Michelle, thank you so much for being my guest, and welcome to the podcast. Thank you, Ajoma. I'm so excited to be here. I love to talk about Etsy, so I think this conversation is going to be a lot of fun. Thank you. I'm so thrilled to have you because now I feel we've closed the loop because I first heard about you and and folks who listen to the podcast, you first came on our radar back in May when I had a conversation with Angie of The Celebration Bird, and she mentioned you and Sasha and Julie, and now we finally get to meet you. So I'm thrilled to have you on the podcast as well. Ah, Thank you so much. And I'm so excited for you to mention that. So for anyone listening, if you haven't already listened to the episodes with Angie um, from The Creative Bird and Sasha from Your Frugal Friend, you absolutely have to go back and listen to them. Both Angie and Sasha are absolutely awesome and Julie um, from Gold City Ventures as well so make sure you check out their episodes yeah absolutely and I'm so impressed because everyone each one of you is so good at what you do and you've each found your different niches and um, I, I from what I understand it all started with the e-printables course but then you've you've grown your businesses into something unique in in their own right and so um I'm, I'm just impressed with what has come out of of that from from you ladies and and that said michelle can you tell us what it is you make and sell on etsy absolutely so on etsy i sell um digital planners notebooks and calendars so my store is called the better grind And I guess my tagline is that I like to design products that bring more happiness, creativity, and productivity to the lives of my customers. Um, And so within that big category of, and those are all digital products, so digital planners, notebooks, et cetera. Um, So within that big category of digital notebooks, my specialty or signature product are notebooks for Microsoft OneNote. Um, which is, that's the main thing that I sell in my store. And for anyone who isn't familiar with OneNote, what is that? So Microsoft OneNote is a note-taking app. It's developed by Microsoft and it's part of the Microsoft Office or Microsoft 365 suite. Um, But it's actually a free program. So anyone can download it on Windows computer or Mac computer. And so you open up the software, Microsoft OneNote, and it basically has the ability to create digital notebooks that you can use to keep yourself organized. Um, So within the OneNote software, you have the ability to create sections, which are kind of like divider tabs to keep your notebook organized. Mm -hmm. And then within those sections, you have the ability to create pages, which would be kind of like the blank pages of a journal that you would write on. Um, because it's digital, you can get a bit creative and create tables. You can drop in images or files and that type of thing. Um, but at the most simple, it's a digital note-taking program that you can use. Okay. And are folks able to use it across devices? So like not just on the computer, but say an iPad or a, a tablet? Absolutely, yes. So Microsoft OneNote, I use it mostly on desktop 
Mm -hmm. um, so I use it on both my Windows and Mac computers, but essentially all of your notebooks are saved to the cloud. And what's cool is that they sync across all of your OneNote compatible devices, which is pretty much any device. You can use it on your phone. Um, you can use it on kind of like an Android tablet mm -hmm. or an iPad mm -hmm. and your notebook will sync. You can make a change in one and it will then sync to all of the other devices where you have OneNote installed. Okay. As long as you're logged into your, your account. As long as you're logged into okay. your account. That's right. Does Microsoft impose any, um, bandwidth or storage restrictions for um, using OneNote? So your OneNote notebooks, they're saved to your um, OneDrive account. And so there is a storage limit for okay. the amount of kind of gigabytes of data that you can have saved on OneDrive if you just have a free account. Okay. Um, you could look up Microsoft's website. I'm not sure exactly what the limit is, but in all of the years that I've been using OneNote, I've never exceeded the available space on OneDrive. Oh, okay, that's good to know. So how would you describe yourself? Because um, most people, when they think of Etsy, they picture somebody with knitting needles in hand or a sewing needle or things of that nature. But what you're creating isn't anything close to that. How would you describe yourself? Yeah. Does that make sense what I'm asking? No, yeah, that makes sense. So I would describe myself as a designer. Um, I like it. And I guess it's interesting. You can come up with a lot of different um ways to describe yourself either a designer or a creative entrepreneur mm -hmm. um, and when I talk about the type of products yeah I would say that I create digital products on Etsy rather than physical products yeah so when did you first discover Etsy I actually don't know when I first <laughs> discovered Etsy as a business so I've known about Etsy for many many years um, and in the past, I had purchased exactly, as you said, mostly physical items mm -hmm. um, from Etsy. And so I only recently in the past couple of years found out that you're able to sell digital products on Etsy. Um, and that was actually through the podcast that Julie from Gold City Ventures used to run called Fire Drill. Oh, and right. so, yeah. um, yeah, so I was a longtime listener of that podcast, and that was how I first got into thinking about side hustling and digital products and kind of learning about all of these different cool ways that you could um, make a bit of money um, doing something fun as a hobby. So when you figured out that you could do that on Etsy, how did you decide on the particular product line, uh, the particular, well, digital product line that you were going to offer? That's a great question. And it's, it's actually a tricky one to answer <laughs> because I feel like it's really an evolution. Mm -hmm. um, and so when I first got into the online space to give a little bit of context, I actually started with blogging um, rather than with Etsy. So mm -hmm. I ran the better grind as a blog for almost two years before I got into the digital product space. Huh. And so at during that time, I was kind of um, writing and using the blog as a creative outlet. I was writing about productivity and happiness and creativity, kind of all of those same core ideas that yeah. I've now taken into my Etsy store. Um, but in all of that time, it was an amazing creative outlet. I was like having fun. I was getting to know a lot of really cool people um, through running that blog, but I was not monetizing it. Um, so mm -hmm. it was like a really fulfilling hobby, but I was not making any money. Mm -hmm. um, and so then after a couple of years of running the blog, a couple of the friends that I had made through um, blogging, I saw that they were having a lot of success on Etsy. Mm -hmm. And so I kind of thought, you know what, I'm keen to give that a go as well. And so I signed up for 
a course. It was called ePrintables. Um, and I opened up my Etsy store. And so when I first started on Etsy, I actually made, um, I think, a bit of a common mistake. And rather than building on top of kind of what I had built up on my blog, I thought to myself, like, what's going to be popular? What's going to be profitable? Yeah. Um, and I decided that I wanted to start out making commercial use templates for business owners. So I saw that real estate templates were really popular on yeah. Etsy. I'm uh -huh. not sure if you've come across that. I have. And I yeah. tried to make, yeah, yeah, Instagram <laughs> marketing templates for realtors. Yep, seen those and too. it failed. It failed so badly Did for me. Um, yeah, and so for a couple of reasons, I think, that firstly, I had no experience in the real estate industry. Mm. So I had seen something that was popular and I was trying to kind of replicate it, but I didn't have my own um, mm. original ideas or kind of different spin on it to add to that niche. Yeah. Um, and there was so much competition. Um, and I guess I didn't have the passion for it to kind of put in enough effort, right, to break mm -hmm. into that. Mm -hmm. particular niche so that was what I when I was looking for coming back to your question which was how did I decide what to um sell on Etsy yeah. that was my first idea and my first approach of how to decide what to sell yeah. and it failed miserably um so after that I kind of took a step back and figured I would look at what had been going really well in my blog um and see if maybe that was a better starting place mm. for what to sell. Mm -hmm. And so I had a OneNote notebook um, that I had created for myself to use at work. And I had actually posted that um, on my blog for free for people to download. And that was the most popular post on my blog. I was getting incredible feedback, all of these compliments wow. from people saying that they were having um, so much trouble finding really high quality or any OneNote notebooks that they could download to mm. use for themselves and that they really loved this um, notebook that I had created. And so that was when it kind of clicked to me and I realized that this could be the product that I sell in my store. Um, and so since then I've switched over to kind of digital notebooks and particularly honing in on OneNote. Um, and that was how I came up with that product idea. I love that story, Michelle, because my goodness, I too have chased trends and failed woefully and wondered what secret sauce does everyone else have that I'm missing? Like I see them selling and, you know, the keyword tool says, you know, this is a good product to sell. And then I try and then it's miserable. <laughs> So you are not the only one who has made that mistake. I think many of us have, maybe more of us than would care to admit, have made that mistake. <laughs> it's so tempting as well, right? So, yeah. Um, yeah. You see uh, something that looks good, looks profitable. It's so tempting to chase after it. Yes. And, and like you, I, I came to the real, realization after, you know, many tries at chasing different trends that they just weren't me. They just, you know, like, you know, with the real estate, I didn't, I didn't do the real estate one, but other things where, you know, I would create a product because I knew the mechanics of how to make it. But I feel like there was an element missing. And like you said, maybe it was because I didn't have like real experience to bring, to that product to set it apart from all the other ones out there and other people did. And, you know, it, it feels kind of miserable initially. Um, but in your case, um, you had something to fall back on. You, you had an audience that was already talking to you, even though you weren't necessarily listening to what they were saying. If you get, if you, um, get what I mean. Now you had, on on your blog you were offering the notebook for free did you have any concerns about starting to sell the notebooks 
So not really. I think I had offered it for free um, for, as I said, a period of a couple of years while I was running the blog. Mm -hmm. And I think when I went to selling it on Etsy, I had always actually listed it as um, free for a limited time to okay. give people that kind of like sense of urgency as they should grab it now. And yeah. so when I switched over, I think I just updated my page to say like, all good things have to come to an end and now like you can download. Um, so I still offer a free calendar that people can download. Okay. I still offer a number of like more basic free products on my blog that people mm. can grab to try out okay. Microsoft OneNote and see how they like it. Mm -hmm. But I think everyone deserves to be paid for the like products that they create. So, yeah. you know, I wasn't too worried about making the switch and um, asking a, a kind of reasonable price for it on Etsy. Yes. So now you did things kind of the opposite, but because you, you Etsy wasn't initially on your radar, because I know some Etsy sellers, a lot of Etsy sellers will start the shop. And then as it grows, start a website, do some content ma marketing through blogging. Have you found that having that the blog before you started your Etsy shop has been beneficial um, for your Etsy store in a way that, you know, is different from if you had done it the reverse? Absolutely. So I guess there are two aspects um, to that question. I have absolutely found it beneficial to my Etsy store. Mm -hmm. But if I were to go back and do it all over again, mm -hmm. I think I would have done it the other way around. And mm -hmm. I would have done Etsy first and then the blog second. Why? Um, and so the, I guess the reason why it was beneficial is because when I decided to make that transition over to Etsy, mm -hmm. I already had some traffic coming in from the blog and I already had that feedback um, from having tried a bunch of things on the blog and having seen what works that mm. helps me to hone in on Etsy more quickly as to what I wanted to do. Um, but if I had flipped it in the reverse and started out on Etsy, I think on Etsy, it's just such an amazing platform. There's such a low barrier to entry. So anyone can open an Etsy store and get started selling digital products. And you can iterate so quickly and create products, get them out there, see if people like them, see what feedback you're getting, see what you're enjoying making. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel like when you're putting something for sale rather than just putting it out as a blog post, mm -hmm. you would get quicker and a better feedback loop um, mm -hmm. doing it that way. And so I think when anyone starts out, it, I think it takes iteration and trying different things and experimentation to see what works um, mm -hmm. and selling different products on Etsy, I think is a really, really powerful way to, to go through that process and kind of hone in on what thing is your thing. Okay. Okay. That, that does make sense. So, so having said that, would, would you say that your, your, um, your Etsy shop and what's going on in your Etsy shop now informs the type of content that you provide on your blog or it doesn't really have an effect on, on that? Absolutely. So it's a bit of a synergy. I would say my blog was previously um, more towards productivity. Um, mm -hmm. And I think now I, it, I'm bringing the topics closer and closer together, if that makes sense. So there's an alignment between mm -hmm. the products that I'm selling in my Etsy store and the topics that I'm talking about on my blog. Yeah. And they're all aiming to serve the same um, group of people. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. That, that makes perfect sense. And I think that's just the ideal world scenario that they, they exist in a symbiotic relationship, you know, which is perfect. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And it's certainly a process. There's a whole lot of old content on my blog that I probably need to refresh and bring closer to, I guess, the vision of what my business is now. Yeah. Um, but 
I figure that's something that can happen slowly over time. Yeah. yeah. So for someone who's listening now who has the Etsy shop already, but hasn't yet started the blog or maybe is yet, is in the beginning stages of starting an Etsy shop, it sounds like you would recommend that they do well, actually, let me not say it sounds like. Would you recommend that they do run a blog as well? And how soon or how much time after running the Etsy shop do you think would be a good amount of time to gauge when when to start um, doing content marketing on, on a blog? Yeah, absolutely. I would say when you're consistently getting sales, on your Etsy store and you feel like you've kind of honed in on your niche and the style of products that you want to sell. Mm -hmm. And depending on the person, I think the time frame, whether it's like six months or a year, whatever it is, is Mm -hmm. it's quite flexible. Mm -hmm. But those kind of milestones, consistent monthly income um, and having a clear sense of what type of products you'd like to sell, I think that's a great time to set up a website And I would say when you're starting out, the website can be really simple. You don't have to um, think of yourself now as an Etsy store owner and a blogger (laughs) and just be adding all of these like additional things to your to-do list. I think the key things when you have a website is to start an email list and to give your customers a way to opt in to that email list so they can continue to get updates from you and that will encourage them to kind of come back time and time again and buy from your store. Um, And then for each of your products that you sell on Etsy, Mm -hmm. I think it's also good to create a post about that product Mm -hmm. that can be another traffic source to your Etsy store. Yeah. Um, And so I think those are the two highest or two of the highest value things that you could do with a website to boost your Etsy store. I like that. That's very helpful information, Michelle, especially from someone who is doing it. um, Because I feel like you're able to look back retrospectively and say, this is how you should really do it. Trust me, I've done it. (laughs) Um, Yes. On your website, um, thebettergrind.com, for anyone who wants to go and check it out, and I will have a link to it in the show notes for this episode also, in case you can't um, go and check it out right now. Is there an e-commerce component to it, or do you keep all your sales strictly on the Etsy platform, and then your website is purely a, a blog? So I have two main income sources for my business. Mm -hmm. There is the Etsy store. Mm -hmm. And then I also do have a course that I launched earlier this year um, where I teach people how to design OneNote notebooks and how to sell them on Etsy. Um, So the Etsy store, all of my payments, all of my digital products, those are done through Etsy. Um, and for the course, I do use a separate e-commerce system called ThriveCut. Yeah. So I try to keep things as simple as possible. Um, and at the moment, I just have those two systems going. Okay. I'm glad you brought that up because this is the perfect time to introduce introduce your course. Um, and for the record, I have gone through Michelle's course about how to create um one note notebooks to sell in your Etsy store. And it's wonderful. Let me, I'm trying to think of the best place to start. Oh no, you're welcome. Because um, this is coming from someone who did not know what one note was, to be honest. I had used the Microsoft Office suite, but just the regular, the basic stuff, Outlook, Word, Excel, and so when I saw OneNote, I was like, what in the world is OneNote and why? And so um, I, I was telling Michelle before we started recording, I was a little bit intimidated by it, but I was drawn to it because, as you know, like like Michelle said, you can look on Etsy and do keyword research and find, you know, from 
just the numbers, things that, you know, the machine tells you will be, will be good to sell, but, you know, you get in there and, and it's really hard. And so for me, I thought, well, this is a, a much less saturated niche. So it's, it's worth, you know, giving it a try. And for someone who didn't even know what OneNote was before your course, you did a really phenomenal job of one, explaining what it was, walking us through um, just how to navigate around OneNote. I got really comfortable with OneNote and it's so much easier to use than I than I imagined. And um, one of the other things I was I was telling Michelle beforehand, too, was I thought it wouldn't work on a Mac because, you know, Microsoft and Apple don't talk to each other, but they do. It works very well on a Mac. (laughs) Um, So for anyone who who wants to who might be interested, can you walk us through what you cover in the course? Absolutely. So. The course that I sell and something that was really important to me when I put the course together is I know how busy I am and how little time I have Mm -hmm. to work on my own Etsy store. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted the course to be super digestible, bite-sized, and something that will take someone from zero knowledge of Microsoft OneNote, Mm -hmm. as you said, not even knowing what it is to having their first notebook listed on their Etsy store in the space of a weekend. Um, And so that is what the course will deliver to you Um, in terms of the content or the steps that take you from beginning to end. So there'll be a couple of videos at the beginning that run you through what is Microsoft OneNote, where do you Mm -hmm. download it, how do you open it up, what are the key features Mm -hmm. to get yourself comfortable with the software. And then we'll talk about there are a couple of different types of notebooks that you can create. So if you search on Etsy, you're going to see two main types of notebooks, and I call them editable which are basically notebooks where you can edit all of the content. The customers can kind of make changes to tweak colors or fonts or layouts to get the notebooks exactly how they like them Mm -hmm. or fixed background where the notebooks basically have a fixed background image that can't be edited by the end customer. So if that's confusing, like don't worry about it right now, but I run you through those two main types of notebooks that you can create. And then we go through um, some worked examples of how to create each of those types of notebooks. I provide commercial use templates, which are gonna help you to create those first planners quickly and build your confidence. I also provide templates for the instructions um, and explain how to package up the notebooks and how to upload them to your Etsy store. So it's kind of every step beginning to end of the process. all of the mechanics that you need to know. So that's basically done for you. You can just follow the steps. And then what you will need to bring to the process is thinking about that, um, I guess, something different that you can add Mm -hmm. to make your notebook unique um, to the other ones out there on the market. Yes. And honestly, Michelle, you did such a good job of of teaching and and walking through like you said in bite-sized um instructional videos because this was for me coming in well before i started it one of the more intimidating ones and like i said the reason was uh, more one of the more intimidating courses i took i have taken because again, the reason was I just was so unfamiliar. Like I just felt like I was coming from Greenland into, I don't know, the Greenland is the one that's, that's icy cold, right? Yes. (laughs) Yes. Yes. Into the tropics. And I just thought, oh, there's no way, but let me give it a, a try. But you 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 gave everything that one would need and so like i said by the end i just i felt so comfortable you know creating the notebooks and and you you know you lead everyone like right up until like you said templates for 
to provide to to the customers. And so I just liked that it was so comprehensive. Let's talk about licensing because OneNote is a product that belongs to Microsoft. How does licensing work and um, and um, how are Etsy sellers able to sell this product without getting in trouble with Microsoft? Absolutely. And so I guess just as a disclaimer, I'm not an expert on licensing, but yeah. more than happy to run through my understanding. Mm-hmm. And so Microsoft OneNote, it's free for personal use. So your customers can download OneNote for free. If you want to download it and check it out and play around with it, you can get it downloaded to your computer today um, for personal use only. If you would like to use OneNote for business purposes, um, which would include designing notebooks to sell in your Etsy store, Mm -hmm. then you'll need to get a commercial use license for OneNote. Mm -hmm. And so there are a number of different subscriptions available um, from Microsoft, including I use the um, business for apps subscription Okay. or sorry, apps for business subscription. (laughs) And that's like about $10 a month for a commercial use version of OneNote. Yes. So that was actually a leading question because I wanted to to, um, mention this. As I was going through the course and I got to that module about licensing, I thought, okay, here we go. This is where I'm going to get tripped up. And, And when you explained licensing, I actually called Microsoft. They have a customer service number. And so I went to the website and I got a human being on the phone, which was the first shocker to me that someone picked up. But um, I got someone on the phone and I did ask about licensing and selling um products that I make um, for OneNote, selling the, 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 the templates for the notebook. And um, the person confirmed uh, to me that, yes, this is the particular type of license, the one that Michelle um, directs you to to get in the course. And the person, I didn't mention the course or anything. I was just asking just to make sure, to see if they knew. And, and he did confirm this is the exact license that you need. If you have this license, sell away, keep the profits, you know, you're good to go. Nobody's coming after you. So that was really reassuring for me also. Yeah, it's fantastic to get that feedback from Microsoft directly. And so I'm really glad you asked this question because it is one of the most common questions that I get from people who are interested in the course just because it can be quite an overwhelming topic, right? Mm -hmm. Just wanting to make sure that you're not doing the wrong thing. You're not yeah. going to have someone coming after you um, down yes. the line. Yeah. Yeah. And and Microsoft is not who I would want to come after me for sure. <laughs> <laughs> me neither. <laughs> um, have you found in the time that you've been selling the OneNote notebook templates um, that any type of um, notebook is more popular than the other or... Are they, is it about the same? Yeah, so definitely the editable style of notebooks Mm -hmm. where customers can have the power to change the layout themselves um, are far and away the more popular type of notebook compared to fixed background. And so I think customers love the ability to be able to tweak things you can have kind of fields and tables that expand to accommodate the text that people write. Um, you're, it, they just work really seamlessly on a computer. And so I feel like a lot of Microsoft OneNote users are using the notebook um, on a desktop computer or a laptop. And that editable style of notebook seems to best meet the needs of the majority of customers. And, you know, that actually makes sense in my mind because I think Etsy has become flooded with just regular um, printable types of planners and 
and and products like that and after a while you know it becomes more commonplace but then people who do want to um, either go paperless or like the convenience of just being able to plan digitally it makes sense that they would gravitate more towards the editable the ones that are editable on the device so everything is just all there you don't have to worry about um printing something out and you know forgetting it or or what have you absolutely and it's really interesting i feel like the most so the most common type of digital notebook that you'll find on etsy Mm -hmm. are the pdf planners that you can use in kind of good notes notability note shelf those types of apps yeah. Um, and I do also sell those PDF planners. Mm-hmm. But when I tell my friends even about the digital products that I'm making, mm-hmm. majority of my friends aren't able to use those digital planners because they don't have a tablet with a stylus, which is really the best device to use to get the most out of those planners oh. because they have um a fixed background and so I feel like um, you can use them on a computer but for those PDF planners in GoodNotes like the ideal use case is to draw on them using a stylus using a tablet and use it similarly to a paper planner um, whereas and so yeah a lot of the people that I talk to they just don't feel like they have the right device to get mm-hmm. the most out of that type of product mm-hmm. whereas OneNote is able to be used by absolutely anyone, no matter what type of device they're on. And so in that way, it's absolutely still a lower competition product. Yeah. Um, but the market is enormous because anyone can use it. Yeah. I did not know that. That is good to know. <laughs> I have a question for you as a course creator. Um, how was the experience creating a course and how does that differ from everything else you've done before? So creating a course, I enjoyed the experience. <laughs> it was so much harder than I ever could have anticipated. So I would say if you're, I think Etsy is the perfect starting place for online business okay and a course is something that you want to build up to and kind of like be ready to commit a few months and to commit a bit of money and getting all of the tech set up mm. um you'll um want to i think pay for a course to get someone to teach you the ropes of how to set up an online course and so it is an investment in both money and time. Yeah. Um, but looking back, I'm really, really glad that I did it. And creating this course has been so much fun. I like <laughs> get to connect with my students of the course every day and see the products that they're creating. Um, and so it's been a really exciting, um, fulfilling journey. Yeah, I like that. That's encouraging, but also um, I like that y- y- you set... Um, expectations somewhere realistic about what it what I'm it not does gonna take. lie I wanted to quit many times <laughs> did when you I, was, um, I did and so it's interesting I feel like what got me through yeah. the course mm-hmm. was having um some I guess you would call it like them colleagues almost I have a mm. couple of really good friends mm-hmm. that I have made um through this digital products journey that I've been on And so having those people to kind of give you some words of encouragement when you're having a rough day or when something isn't working or it's taking you like weeks or months longer than you expected it to, having that community of people um, to to keep in touch with is really what got me through um, creating the course. And I'm so glad that I did. Yeah. Yeah. The support system is, is always so important. The other question I have for you um, is you're a course creator, but then you're also teaching people how to make and sell what you create and sell. Did you have any concerns about creating competition for yourself or, 
you you believe there's more than enough room for everyone in this pond yeah so i won't lie it has absolutely crossed my mind yeah um but i really try to approach this business with an abundance mm. mindset mm -hmm. and there is so much potential in the digital product space as a whole there is yeah. so much potential still even within the one note niche and i only have so many hours in the day i am yeah. um, this is a side hustle for me so i work on my digital products in evenings and on weekends yeah um when i have that spare available time and i know that i can't create enough um products to serve the market that's out there yeah so i think there is so much potential for other people to jump in and i guess join um this community of digital product sellers and to bring their own unique ideas and experience um, to bring products that are different than what i would be able to create yes so i actually um I mean, I haven't seen any decrease in sales since starting the course, and I've oh, seen um, many of my students having success selling their own OneNote notebooks. Yes. So overall, I would say, like, if this interests you, like, there's room for you. Come on in. We're, like, part of a community, and I'm really excited to to teach you and to help you along and to see what you create. Oh, I love that. That's that's so good to hear. Um, and and I um like you said everyone can bring something different to it like you have a project management background someone who has let's take real estate for instance background will create a, a product a, you know a, a notebook that caters to that market that perhaps even with your skill that you have of making these you might not make one that really serves the need of people in that in that niche. And so I think that's like the special thing that each individual can bring to their own where you're not fighting with everyone else for, you know, space on the platform. Absolutely. And if you're wondering, like for all of the listeners out there, if you're wondering what is my special thing, like I don't know what that is, what can I bring? Mm -hmm. Um there are exactly as you said if you have a career that's a great place to start so if you're a teacher or if you're a counselor or if you're a coach or whatever your career is yeah um if you potentially create a notebook for that particular career person yes. um that is a way that you can add so much value because you're going to have all of these insights about what that particular person would want to see in a notebook yeah that anyone else outside of the industry wouldn't know yes or even if you have kind of other hobbies or passions like you love to cook i think recipe planners are really popular mm -hmm. um so whatever your hobby is just bringing something that you have passion for and knowledge about and thinking about how that could be transformed into a notebook i think is a really good place to start yeah and i'll tell you from from going through it what I did because for me initially I was like well I don't know what to create you know I'll just I like that you walk us through how to do a very simple calendar initially the the um the um the fixed background one but then for the other one I was like okay what do I what can I do that's different for me I have my background is in pharmacy and one of the things that um, we have to do, um, well, almost everyone in the medical field is keep up with continuing education. We have to, we have to continuously, you know, take classes and courses, you know, to stay up with new medications and new ways to treat things and, and all whatnot. And so I thought, oh, great. I'll create one for medical people to track all our continuing education. Because if you don't do it, you can't relicense and then you can't work and then, you know, it's bad. So so for me, that was my thing was, oh, hey, I can do one for pharmacists to keep up with their continuing education and, you know, all the requirements we need to stay licensed. And then one for podcasters, because I've done that you know, how to, you know, keep track of your guests and your scheduling dates and, you know, 
when you're releasing episodes and social media and all that. So yes, I, I like that you gave me the skills to be able to create something that's unique to me. That is so cool. I would love to see those products that you created. And absolutely, I hadn't thought about the continuing professional development idea. Uh-huh. But that is such a good one for people because it's unique to every industry, right? So yeah. I'm in um, project management and specifically in the infrastructure space. Mm-hmm. And so there are also in that industry a whole lot of licensing requirements mm. and continuing professional development that you have to do to stay charted. Yeah. However, it's different industry by industry and even like country by country, yes. depending on your licensing body, mm-hmm. you need to make sure you're following the specific rules. And yeah. so it is really helpful to have a way to keep track that you've um, done your the correct professional development for your particular industry, your particular uh, location that you're in. Yeah. And so huge potential there. Yeah. Yeah. And, and same here too. And like here even just in the states alone like one state will require pharmacists to have you know six hours of um education in pharmacy law and then you know 15 or 20 hours uh clinical practice like clinical topics and then another state has a different requirement and so it's it's kind of complicated because everything is state specific but then for me creating it I just feel like I am putting so much value into this that I don't feel bad or I won't let me say feel bad charging what um, I think it's worth which is not going to be a dollar yeah absolutely (laughs) and so on that as well I think uh, it like hurts when I see people selling digital products for (laughs) such a small amount of money. And I feel like a big part of my success on Etsy Mm -hmm. has been honing in on a niche that allows me to sell high value digital products. Yeah. And so we haven't talked about prices yet, but for a more more detailed one note notebook, you can easily charge in the order of twenty to thirty dollars. And I would say um when you're pricing your notebooks, mm-hmm. just search on Etsy and look for what the average is and start there. I would okay. say, like, don't try to undercut other people. Mm-hmm. Ask the value that you think it's worth. And 20 to $30 for a notebook is not unreasonable. And if you just think, like, you only have to sell kind of a little over 30 $30 notebooks to make over $1,000 yeah. a month on on etsy yeah that yeah that blows my mind and and you have a very trim product line it's not you know it's not overwhelming and still you know i look in your store and almost everything is you know filled up in people's carts which i don't know if that always translates into you know, eventual sales, but it's a good sign that, you know, people are bookmarking the these products that you have to come back to um, when they see them. Yeah, I think it does. So all of the products in my store that have that little like number against them uh-huh. of 20 people have this in their cart. Yeah, those are all of the best selling products that I have oh. in my store. So I think it definitely translates between the number of sales. Speaking of that, do you, you know how Etsy allows you to do these campaigns where if someone, um, I think it's called abandoned, abandoned cart campaigns. So if they either like something of yours or they have it in their cart, you can send them a coupon to encourage them to come back and complete the sale. Do you do any of that or you just let things be and people just come back when they're ready? I do. So I I like to automate as much as possible. Mm. So I don't do any manual sales, Mm -hmm. but I do take advantage of those automated coupons that Etsy offers. Mm -hmm. And so if someone um, leaves an item in their cart, they'll get a discount sent to them to buy the product. 
if someone makes an order, I'll give them a thank you coupon. So they'll mm. get a percentage off their next order. Um, and I do take advantage of those two features. Yeah. How about um, Etsy updates where you can post to social media? Do you do any of that? And in fact, do you do any type of social media marketing? I know you said you try to automate everything, but what are your thoughts or how do you handle that for your shop? So I do zero <laughs> social media. And the reason for that is not because I don't think it works, but because I personally find it draining and unfulfilling and it takes up a lot of time for me to be on social media. Mm. So I um, primarily market my shop through Etsy CEO. So making sure I have really good titles and keywords mm. and tags. Mm -hmm. um, and I also drive a little bit of traffic to my Etsy store through the website that I've created. Yeah. Other than that, I do have a really active email list where I like to keep in touch with people. Mm -hmm. And actually on my profile page, this is, this is actually a trick that I learned from um, Angie and her course on branding your Etsy store, mm -hmm. that you can have a video where you talk about your Etsy store and you can kind of tell people how to connect yes. with you. So um, that's just like one of the tricks that you'll learn if you um, take yes. Angie's course on branding, which is discussed in a previous episode. Yes. And so in that video, I tell people, you're not going to find me on social media. <laughs> so if you'd like to stay in touch, jump over to my website in the link below and join my email list. That's how I keep in touch with people. Nice, nice, nice. Yes. I thought that was such a great um, tip from Angie because it never even occurred to me. I was like, oh, yeah, it just makes sense. Her, her course, course was really good and i will link to that in the show notes for this episode so if you haven't checked it out yet do yourself a favor and check out angie's course um oh i, I was going to ask you something else related to that what you were saying and now i forgot so i will move on Just, ah social media no oh yes email marketing. So how much time do you spend just staying connected and in front of your subscribers? I really need to start tracking that. I probably spend about a half hour a day on emails for my business. Every so single day? About... Yeah. And so <laughs> that's not necessarily replying to emails okay. but that's thinking about what oh. um, topics my customers and my audience might be interested in and mm. planning out what emails I want to send them and scheduling emails for the future um, so I don't I spend hardly any time at all honestly on kind of customer support it's occasional questions here and there mm -hmm. um, but for me it's more forward focused thinking about how I want to connect with people and um, yeah putting together that email content. Okay. All right. That, that makes sense. Michelle, it's like you did everything the right way because if you listen to, which I listen to quite a bit, you know, all these business people, a lot of them are not so big on, you know, pushing you towards using social media to grow your business and your platform. They're like, you know, they, you know, harp a lot more on email marketing and, you know, staying in touch with your customers and, you know, staying connected with them. And you're doing all that. Did all this just come naturally to you? Like, how did you know all this stuff? It did not come naturally to me. Um, I suppose it's a combination of, trial and error, but mm. also I think the biggest component of my success and the biggest influence on how I've decided to do different things in the order that I'm, I've done them is learning from people who have mm. done this before me and who mm. have been successful. So mm. we spoke at the beginning of this podcast about how I came across um, digital products from Julie's um, podcast, Fire mm. Drill. And that led me to their series of courses. And I ended up taking the e-printables 
course. And that mm. was how I really learned how to sell digital products on Etsy. I also listened to a lot of podcasts. Um, and so through that combination of taking courses, talking to people who are doing similar things, mm. listening to podcasts, like this podcast is such an incredible resource oh, for people um, wanting to get started selling on Etsy or wanting to improve their Etsy game. So yeah, thank you so much for putting out all of this awesome content um, for you. free into the world. Thank you. Um, that is how I've um, kind of found my path. But I don't think like you never know if what you're doing is going to be the right way. So yeah. I think just listen, learn from other people's experiences. And I kind of try to take a little step forward every day. Yeah. Make some mistakes, fix them and then move forward, huh? exactly yeah <laughs> done is better than perfect yes. yeah there are going to be a lot of mistakes along the way yeah how often do you add new products to your product line or do you sometimes find that you're just in a creative rut so i go through it's very cyclical mm. um at the moment, I am investing quite a lot of time in thinking about what new products I want to add into mm -hmm. my store and designing products, listing mm -hmm. products. Mm -hmm. So at the minute, I'm spending maybe 10 hours a week um, on my business overall and doing a lot okay. of product creation. Uh -huh. However, for the whole beginning um, six months of this year, when I was working um, exclusively on well, in my spare time, um, kind of evenings and weekends, I was working on the OneNote course and making that what I wanted it to be. Yeah. For that whole six months, I didn't add any new products to my Etsy store. And it just kind of ran along by itself. And I only was there to answer the occasional um, customer support query that came in. Okay. So I try to really follow my curiosity, I guess. Mm -hmm. Whatever I'm feeling excited about, that's what I'll work on in a particular month mm -hmm. um and it's definitely up and down so months when i have a lot of um creative energy to do product design and months where i don't and i just yeah. work on other things okay i like that that makes sense it's a balance is there any thing you can think of that served as a lesson for you that you've learned um along the way selling on Etsy, maybe you learned it the hard way and now you know better, you can give advice to someone who's listening now so they can avoid learning that particular lesson the hard way. Absolutely. Oh, there are so many. I mean, we already <laughs> talked about one, which is um, trying to copy or chase a yeah. trend rather than following um, your own interests and passions and kind of drawing on that as a way to come up with product ideas. Yes. I think that would be the biggest one. Another mistake that I've made is just spending too long trying to perfect a product before mm -hmm. listing it rather than mm -hmm. getting something to like the best that I can make it at that time and just putting it out into the world and yeah. knowing that I can always come back and improving it. Or, well, I can always come back and improve okay. it later. Yeah. Um, yeah. So not, I think definitely try to iterate over getting stuck, trying to perfect one product for a really long time. Um, yeah. That process of iteration is going to really um, get you to where you want to go so much faster. Yeah. Been there and I can relate. <laughs> Thinking about the Etsy platform, are there, is there any feature that currently doesn't exist on there that ideally you would like to see on there someday? Yes. So I would like Etsy to have a way for people to opt directly into my email list. That would be a dream. Like with a live link, right? Yeah. So when <laughs> someone um, purchases a product, yeah. there, there's a way that they can tick a box and say, yes, I want to opt in oh, to yes. um, the email <gasps> list for the better grind and continue to get updates. So I actually, um, I offer people the opportunity to join my email list whenever they buy a product, they can mm -hmm. join my email list to get kind of future um, promotions and freebies. Mm -hmm. And I have basically in every product that someone downloads a link that a person mm -hmm. can click to join um, my email list. 
However, I think it would be, it's one extra step, right? That people yeah. have to go through. And so if that could be part of Etsy sale platform, yeah. that would make me very happy. I don't know that they'll ever do that. I was just about them. to say, yes, that <laughs> sounds great. And that sounds like exactly the, comp- the type of competition they don't want. <laughs> I know, unfortunately. But, yeah. you know. Yeah, one can fun. hope though. One can hope. <laughs> Yeah, but that would be nice because it would be so much easier um, to get to, you know, to get those names and and save people that extra step because a person would have to be really committed to highlight the link. Like if it's if it's on Etsy you know, to highlight that, copy it, paste it into the address bar and then sign up um, that that's a really committed um person who who wants to get on your list so but i know some people Absolutely. do it so that's good but yeah it would be nice if it was easier yes if it was fully automated that would be my dream but who knows <laughs> we'll see we'll wait and see yeah what's something that you're doing now that you feel is really working well for you and you wouldn't change So I think the niche that I've honed in on, mm-hmm. on um, kind of having a broad theme, those digital products that help people to find more happiness, productivity, and creativity, I think that niche is working really well for me. Mm-hmm. Um, and the reason is that it's like, it just resonates with my personality. It's broad enough that I'm not... Um, I'm not tied to just one type Mm -hmm. of digital product Mm -hmm. or one type of notebook. So I absolutely love OneNote. And I think that's going to remain my signature product for a long time to come. But it just opens the doors, right, for me to experiment. And um, this, for me, this is a creative side hustle. And it's all about having fun and like refilling my creative bucket. And so having honed in on that topic yeah is is working well and I hope I'll continue down that path nice I like that are there any tools that you use and you've found are particularly helpful in um, just helping you as a seller on Etsy or in general as a business person just to you're the organization and productivity queen I'm sure there are actually now that I think about it (laughs) <laughs> Absolutely. I feel like there are a whole lot of different tools that I use. Probably the tool that saves me the most time um, with regards to my Etsy store mm-hmm. is Canva. And oh. so I think a lot of people use Canva, but I use it for all of my listing images. I use it for um, creating some simple digital products. Mm-hmm. I use Canva for so much. And It's just really great value. Um, You can use it online. It allows you to store all of your listing images in the cloud on one place. It has like a really powerful database of um, kind of fonts and stock images and clip arts behind it that you just have to be careful that you understand the licensing terms of the different resources that you're using from within the software yes. but i absolutely love canva it's a, a tool that i would recommend to anyone who's running an etsy store absolutely i i use it too and I, I, initially i struggled with it i used to use pick monkey and i thought my brain worked better with pick monkey but canva has come such a long way now it's my go-to tool for graphic design as well it's also an Australian company. I was so just about to say that. Representing <laughs> Australia, yeah. <laughs> yes, it is for sure. I was just about to say yes, and they're Australian. I, yeah, that's. Uh, it's so not wonderful. why I would recommend it to someone. I would recommend it because <laughs> the product is great. But it's um cool to see a tech company coming out of my home country. For as sure, well. for sure. Michelle, do you have an Etsy shop shout out? And this can be another seller, maybe someone that you that has helped you along the way or a shop you just want to support and, and let us know about. Yes, absolutely. So a shop that I think some of your listeners might love, I've used it to download um, 
Excel spreadsheets to do my Etsy accounting when I first started before I had a kind of accountant to help me out with that. Yeah. And it's called Made on the Common. So I absolutely, this actually isn't someone that I know. I'm not affiliated with this yeah, store yeah. at all, but I love her Excel templates for doing your Etsy accounting at the end of every month um, to help with your taxes. Oh, so nice. if you're stressed about tax, you like need a spreadsheet to help out with that. This uh, is one that I've personally used and would recommend. And it's made on the common C-O-M-M-O-N. That's right. Oh, and it, the spreadsheets I'm assuming are dynamic. So as you put in your numbers, the, it does calculations and stuff. Exactly. So the way that it works is you out of Etsy, you mm -hmm. download your all of your transactions for the month mm -hmm. and then you paste those into the spreadsheet you might have to do a little bit of processing and the spreadsheet comes with some really comprehensive instructions of how to oh, use it nice. and then it will basically suck in all of that data yeah. and automatically do all of your calculations and so it will break down your sales by country it will break <gasps> down kind of how much you um how much was income, how much was advertising, how much was tax, how much was fees. And it will lay all of that out for you in a really nice format. So it's, um, it's a great value. Nice. Okay. So I will find the shop made on the common and I will link to it in the show notes for anyone who wants to check it out. And if the shop owner happens to ask you how you found out about about her templates or her Excel spreadsheets, let her know that Michelle sent you. So yeah, good. That's a good one. Um, what's the best way people actually know before I ask you that? Um, I was, I, I'll ask you how, how people can connect with you, but just going back to touch on the OneNote notebook creation course, is there anything else about the course that you want someone listening to know about it that maybe we didn't touch on in our conversation? So I would say if you're interested at all in creating digital notebooks um, and the course sounds interesting to you, then yeah, it's just gonna take you beginning to end, everything that you need to know, super simple, how to create a OneNote notebook and list it on your Etsy store in one weekend. That's what you can expect. And if that interests you, I would be so excited to welcome yeah. you into the course and to see what you create. Wonderful. I will have um, links to Michelle's course so you can go and check it out. I've, like I said earlier, I, I've done it. it it really is very digestible. You can get through it in a weekend and have your products listed, especially if you have your Etsy shop already, which most people listening to this do. So um, go take a look. I'll put the links in the show notes for this episode. And Michelle, if anyone wants to reach out to you, if maybe they have more questions or they just want to connect with you after this, what's the best way they can do that? Absolutely. So the best way to get in touch is to join my email list. So if you head over to thebettergrind.com, um, there'll be a number of ways there that you can join my email list and you'll be able to then reply back to me if you have any questions and we can get in touch that way. Okay, wonderful. So I will have a link to Michelle's website as well as her Etsy store and of course to the course as well. Oh, yeah, of course, to the course as well. <laughs> <laughs> Michelle, thank you so much for taking the time out to chat with me and on this, well, where you are, nice, sunny, I, it looked sunny to me, morning in Sydney, Australia. I, I really appreciate you starting your day off with me. Thank you so much, Jeremiah. I had so much fun today. Thank you. I did as well. And I thank you for listening to this episode of the podcast. Links to everything we talked about will be in the show notes for this episode. Just go to convome.com. This is episode 346. And I will be back with another episode next week.